National Prep Showcase along with Adam Finkelstein. Jeff Tooley with you. Tons of basketball talent here in the Elm City this weekend with some of the top programs in the country. And up next, we've got Brewster Academy from New Hampshire facing Mike Mount Zion Prep out of Baltimore, Adam. Well, Brewster Academy is just the standard by which other prep schools are judged. They've got six national prep championships in the last decade, but this is a rematch of a game from last year where Mount Zion scored the upset. So a little bit of retribution on the mind for Jason Smith and his club here tonight. It'll be a who's who really for uh, for Brewster Academy. They've got several Division One recruits. Well, they commits. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they've got, uh, it was a signing fest last week during the uh, the national signing period. Of course, you got Terrence Clark going to Kentucky. You got Matt Cross going to Miami. Damar Ashton Langford going to Boston College. And the list just goes on and on. So we are set for a college uh, prep high school basketball here today, and this will be game four of the schedule. So tons of games throughout the weekend here in the Elm City. And uh, the Warriors set to take on the Bobcats. Mount Zion Prep out of Baltimore, coached by Leonard Harrison and the Bobcats. Uh, banks of Lake Wanapasaki and Wolfboro, New Hampshire, coached by Jason Smith. Proud New Hampshire native is, as I said, developed the premier prep program in the country right in his uh, his home state there. Brewster in the white uniforms will shoot basket to the right. The opposite end, the basket left on the television screen and Mount Zion prep in the black unis. Joe Smith set to jumping up opposite Terrence Clark, who you mentioned the Boston native committed to Kentucky. Yeah, Terrence is the, the highest profile prospect in the game. He was a member of the class of 2021 uh, up until that commitment to Kentucky, at which point he reclassified and now going to head to Kentucky a year earlier than planned. It'll be fun to watch. What type of talent does he bring to his game? Well, he's got tremendous perimeter size and versatility, uh, and that's really the key. He can do so many different things well. He's he's a functional athlete. He can be a playmaker. He can be a shot maker. So there's not many holes in his game, really just working on the consistency of the overall motor right now. And getting ready to jump it up. Terrence Clark and Joe Smith. The official in the center circle. And the ball is tipped and a tap controlled by Brewster. So the Bobcats will have it first to start. Now this is Kadari Richmond, the big guard from Brooklyn, New York, who is headed to Syracuse next year. And that cross has it. It's the inside of the cutting lane for Junior who gets a layup to go. They're well executed first set. Damar Ashton Langford, you see those long arms, that powerful body. Terrific pickup for Jim Christian and his staff with the Eagles, where he'll join his older brother, Makai Ashton Langford, the Providence transfer. Bounce it down in the paint. Frazier, the third, comes up with it, loses the handle. Ball goes out of bounds, but a foul called in the play. A lot of ball there. It was Frazier, the third, going to the charity stripe for the Warriors. Seeing if they can get their first points of the game. He's from Phoenix, Arizona, and misses the first one of a two-shot situation. And Frazier's one of those guys, I think, who could really help himself both this weekend and throughout the rest of the season. The big lefty wing, you can see he's got a strong frame, can really get to the rim. If he can shoot the ball consistently, he's got a chance to uh, take his recruitment to the next level. Tons of college coaches, NBA scouts here, Adam, today. Is it a lot of pressure on some of these kids, and is it tough not to think about, well, I'm playing for maybe a future right now this weekend? I, I think potentially that could be a factor for some, I, but I, I do think that a lot of these kids um, at the level that they're used to playing at have, have played in front of college coaches for a long time. Jamal Mashburn Jr. missing the shot, but on the turnover, Brewster able to get it back. Mashburn Jr. Drives along that baseline, loses the handle, ball poked out of bounds. 
It'll stay with the Bobcats. Well, those are two of the guys who are really among the leaders for this Brewster team, Damar Ashton Langford and Jamal Mashburn Jr. Just uh, high motors, hard workers, tough kids from start to finish. Mitch Moon, the basketball. Andre out of Brooklyn. Going to Syracuse, as Adam mentioned. And the ball stolen away, stripped by Kadar Waller, but I'm going to call a reach and foul. Trying to jump that ball screen there. Bakers, and that's all. Bakersfield, California, and it picks up his first. And you know, that's that's always been the key with Richmond. Richmond's talent level is, is off the charts, but so much of it comes down to his motor consistency, making the right play, not taking any shortcuts on every single play. Ashburn Jr. now for cross. Cross gets it off to Mashburn Jr. He drives in, kicks nice. it left side for an open three. Nothing but nylon for Terrence Clark. Yeah, that's pretty basketball. Good drive by Jamal Mashburn Jr. Absorbed the contact, played off two feet in the lane. Made that nice find. Booster Academy out to a 5-0 lead a couple of minutes in. There's a left wing three, and it's going to rim out. That one, pretty sure the third had it. It's poked can... away, and comes right in the hands of... Mount Zion. Nice feed of Frazier who drives it and scores. Well, you can see why Frazier could be appealing. We talked about that perimeter size. You see the athleticism in the open floor. And I'll tell you what, even that open three on the last possession looked a lot better than those free throws did. So he's he's not without some shooting potential. Mashburn Jr. drives in and initiates the contact and had the shot blocked, but he gets fouled and go to the free throw line. And boy, this kid has some pretty good genes. Yeah, just a hard straight line drive there. And you know what I like about him? People talk about his genes. Dad, former NBA All-Star, you know, played at Kentucky and then went on to have a, that NBA career. You would think that a kid who grew up in that type of environment would have uh, have some privilege to him. There's absolutely none in this kid's wow. game. He is as tough as they come. There's zero sense of entitlement. He is from Miami, and he'll be heading to Minnesota. Ed Conroy here from the Gopher staff, checking out his future combo guard. 7-2 lead, Brewster Academy, and a top of the key three by Woody Nelson. Uh, Newton, I should say, commit for Syracuse. Yeah, he and Kadari Richmond will be teammates next year. They're going at each other right now, as you see Richmond bringing the ball up. But Newton, kind of that wiry, elastic forward. He's an athlete, he's an athlete who's... Seen his skill set improve over the course of the years. Now he can make that shot consistently. Cross tries a three, can't get the shot to go. Ball goes in the hands of Mount Zion. And this is, I think, the challenge. There's a look at Ed there Conroy there. This is the, the challenge when you're a program like Brewster. Is no matter who you play, it's their Super Bowl. Right. Every single night. He's built something special up in Lake Onipasaki, hasn't he? Oh, to say the least. As we said, it's, it's the, uh, the prep school which everybody else is judged by now. And a call foul. The ball poked out of bounds, and uh, Mount Zion will get it back down by a bucket. It's ironic, but the name of the facility in Wolfboro is the Smith Center. It's not named after Jason Smith, although it probably should be. Yeah. And inside the Smith Center, they have their NBA wall where the alums who have moved on to the NBA... Uh, they get their jerseys hanged, and it is a prestigious list. Obviously, Donovan Mitchell, the most notorious now. Watch out for this one. And all the way tiptoeing in is Terrence Clark, who lays it up and in to make it 9-5. Devontae Graham, another former Brewster guard who's tearing it up right now, playing for the Charlotte Bobcats after his career at Kansas for Bill Self. He's in the midst of a breakout season. They've got alumni list, as you can imagine, is pretty impressive. Remember, Jeff Adrian went there, too. Absolutely. That's when they were just getting it started. Yeah, former star and captain at UConn for the locals watching. And result in a turnover, and Booster Academy will take over on O, looking to build on the edge. Here's a look at head coach Jason Smith, who has, you know, we said this in the earlier broadcast, talking about building a program from the ground up, but that is... <laughs> absolutely been the case here with Brewster. They really just, he started the program and built it into what it is today. Langford Jr. Off to Richmond who walks it by the mid-floor line. Bounces it to Cross. Hand off to Mashburn Jr. Now Clark. Clark between the legs. 
There's a left side, kind of a high pass. Leaping for it, it's Mashburn Jr. You know, turnover. Pushing down the other side quickly, Munzai and Prep cashes in. What a nice field goal that time and a fast break. Brewster coming right back at you. Matt Cross, that's he what is. he does. Yeah, he's a bully. Straight line drive, bodies are going to bounce right off him. He'll head to Miami next year to play for Jim Laranega. By him with the basketball. Leaves it left side for Frazier. Frazier circles the perimeter. Tries to go by Cross, gets in in the paint, and has the block, has the shot blocked. Back the other side is Brewster Academy, and all the way to the hoop, it's Richmond. Kadari Richmond's basketball instincts are off the charts. I mean, this guy's got just such a, a natural feel for the game. He's got floor vision, which you'll see later on. He's got terrific hands. It's just a matter of getting that motor revving at the highest level on every single possession. Academy off the miss, looking to Bill in a 13-7 edge. Mashburn Jr. drives in, free throw line extended, and two defenders go in and they get a little bit more of the body than they would like in a foul call on Mount Zion. Yeah, a little bit of a bailout call there. Wasn't wasn't any, not sure there was an open driving lane there, no, but I mean, he forces that contact. He's closing quickly. For Junior. Set to inbound for the Bobcats. Gets it into Cross. How about that? You bring guards off the bench who are going to Maryland and UMass. <laughs> what do you press when you know you're deep? Mm -hmm. And this is a much more perimeter oriented Brewster team than we've seen in some of the past years, but they've always typically have a lot of size. But I'd say I, I think they're at their best when they uh, when they're guard driven. Would you say, I mean, you look at some of the schools we talked about, Syracuse, UMass, Valparaiso, you've got Minnesota, Kentucky, Maryland, Miami, Boston College. Is this one of his more talented groups he's had? You know, it tough to tell. It, you don't want to take anything away from the group, but it's almost the norm. And it's... Wow. Uh, you mentioned all the guys who are in the NBA right now. Yeah, yeah. And, and what the interesting thing is, is that it's not necessarily... The way they end up isn't necessarily where they start. So, for example, when Donovan Mitchell was here, he was here on the same team with Jalen Adams, and Jalen Adams was was kind of the, the most dynamic playmaker on that team. Donovan's obviously surpassed him since, um, but but things change, and, and we've seen tons of not just college stars, but NBA stars come out of this program in the last decade. Langford Jr. fakes the handoff to Garcia. He gets Garcia the basketball. Up top, Cross steps into a three, a little bit too strong. Playing for Junior to handle the rebound, but Zion takes over. Here's Angeson. Now for Frazier, drives in, can't get the shot to fall. Grabs the rebound and gets fouled. That's the one thing they could potentially be missing right now. They really don't have a rim protector in there, so you've... More or less got a four-guard lineup here. The guards have good size. Clark is 6'7", Dockery 6'3", Ashton Langford 6'4". So they've got the size to guard bigger guys, but there's not a true rim protector on the back line. David Giesen going to the free throw line. 6'9", Ford out of Netherlands and misses the front end. His second year in the U.S. He's get a look at Jason Smith there. Mm -hmm. You've got to be happy, as you mentioned. You're pulling guys and putting subs into games coming off the bench that are going big time. Well, again, I, I think, you know, listen, the easy thing to do is say, hey, they've got better players than everybody every year. They could have said that about Phil Jackson. Too, sure, absolutely. You know? and, and the being able to coach chemistry, well, two things. Being able to assemble a roster with more talent than everybody else is one half of it, but then being able to coach chemistry within that group is is uh, extremely difficult. And I think that's really an area where where he's an expert. Marcus Dockery going to Maryland, knocks home the triple from the top of the key to make it 16-8. Quickly back the other side, Monzion tries to answer, but the shot rejected. Don't tell Matt Cross they don't have a rim protector. <laughs> Here's Jack Brown tries to drive along the baseline. Got a little bit of that line, and it'll be a turnover as Mount Zion prep takes over. I think the key for Mount Zion this year is going to be their backcourt. You see some of the college coaches in attendance there. 
the Niagara staff, new head coach Greg Paulus, his assistant. One of about 65 coaches who've already been in here on day one. And is the place to be for college coaches. What can I tell you? He's a shot blocker now. <laughs> he heard you, I guess, yeah. right? Yeah, I'm not going to mess with Matt. Matt Matt's, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to run into the run into Matt in an alley. He's a tough kid, isn't He's he? A, he is as tough as they come. Going to Miami. And a Massachusetts kid right here from Beverly. He is, yep, yep. Had a, had a great season in the EYBL with BABC. One of, finished in the top 10 in the league in both scoring and rebounding. And Garcia gives it now to Cross, who cuts his way to the basket, can't finish inside. Warriors come up with a rebound. And I tell you what, that's the part of his game that's really evolved since last year. Now his, stop. Ab his ability to put it on the floor and create his own shot. I, that, that, wasn't, he, that wasn't there a year ago. He was kind of a guy who hung his hat strictly on on uh, you know being tougher than everybody else. He could stretch the floor and he'd go in and get his own off the glass, but wasn't the shot creator off the bounce that he is now. Juan Garcia couldn't get the shot to fall. Now he's trying to defend against Kendall Byram. There's a shot that was off the side and terrific effort by Matt Cross to get there for the rebound. Can't pull it in though. And Bates has it now. He drives in, can't get the shot to go. And Gisian throws now for Newton, tries the three, no good in a foul. Caught the clothesline. And a whistle called against Worcester Academy. So Mount Zion will inbound. And it's Frazier the third. And throws the ball nearly picked off. Terrific effort by Dockery that time. Driving in is N. Giesen. Can't get the shot to fall. This is where you see the versatility. Yep. Clark drives in. He can't get the angle. Couple of misses. Now the home run pass to N. Giesen. He slams it home. Nobody back for the Bobcats. That makes it a six point game 16 10 as we approach the midway point of this first half one guy we haven't talked about yet javon garcia just entered the ball there headed to umass next year i think he's a really good get for the minutemen dockery marcus knocks down his second three-pointer that's what he does maryland yeah, yeah he's a shot he's a shot maker smooth Played with the ball in his hands more in the uh, Under Armour Association. Ran with DC Premier his entire grassroots career, at least in the high school ages, and did an admirable job with his assist to turnover ratio. But what he does first and foremost is make shots. Dockery here will try to lead his team to a double digit advantage for the first time. There's Clark. Off to Dockery. Garcia. Javon pulls up just outside of the free throw line. Can't get the shot to go. Clark, the offensive rebound, puts it up in the left hand and scores. Well, there you see the long arms. That's the length we're talking about. Remember, he's a guy who you can play really, I think, at the next level. You can almost play him one through four. I think right now he's played one through three. But at his size, as his frame continues to fill out, there's going to be four men he, he's going to be physically capable of matching up with. Brewster leads it by 11, 21 to 10. We'll take a break. We turn to New Haven after this. You're watching the National Prep Showcase.
Welcome back in New Haven, Albertus Magnus College in the Elm City. Jeff Tooley, Adam Finkelstein. Good to have you with us for the National Prep Showcase here in New Haven this weekend. Mount Zion Prep out of Baltimore against Brewster Academy out of Oak Bar, New Hampshire. And the Bobcats from Brewster have pumped up to an 11 point lead for the first time. They get the basketball out of the timeout. Stepping into a long two, Marcus Dockery comes up empty. And Zion Prep pulls down the rebound. There's Bynum, Kendall Byram from Newport News, Virginia with the basketball. Trying to get away with Brewster Academy just had wholesale changes. And Gazian tries the three, can't get the shot to go. Frazier, the offensive rebound, put back no good, couldn't get the angle. And the rebound cleared by Terrence Clark of the Bobcats. And this is where he, he's got a mismatch. He, he's going to be such a mismatch creator at the next level. When you put him at the four like this and you've got other bigger guys trying to guard him, they've got virtually no chance. Langford Jr. Throws it now for Mashburn Jr. Tries the three, can't get the shot to go. Rebound grabbed by Terrence Clark. And the product going to Kentucky gets fouled. Nine twenty-two to go, nine twenty-three to go, and half number one. And Terrence Clark, the six-seven athlete from Boston, Massachusetts, going to the free throw line. Certainly one of the best in New England preps this season. And misses the free throw though, and Mount Zion able to pull down the rebound. It's an 11-point lead for Brewster Academy. Been clicking offensively so far. There's Bynum trying to get by Richmond. Does get by him, pulls up with a tough shot. Partially contested, no good, a little bit too strong. And the Warriors, watch the Bobcats grab that rebound. Nice pass, good movement. And a three-pointer en route by Mashburn Jr. He got it. Yeah, that's as good of a possession as they've had tonight. Got good dribble penetration, extra pass, and a step in three for one of their best shooters. 14-point lead now for Brewster Academy. And see, when you're as guard-heavy as they are, you've got a lot of interchangeable parts. It gives you the flexibility to switch some screens. And Giesen, and as you see him go in there and get the easy basket, that time he used all that 6-9 for him. Yeah, and soft hands too. Tough catch on a rocket pass. 12-point game. Kadri Richmond crosses over. Goes at left side for Dockery. Now steps into a three and gets it a go. Boy, Marcus Dockery going to Maryland, nails the triple. That was one of those ones that looked like he had a straight line to the rim. Could have gotten an easy pull-up, but watching on... Watching those James Harden highlights, and why not? <laughs> Spirit. Or rather, uh, Waller for Mount Zion. He's gonna drive in deep. Kicks it for Bynum. Good now defense. right wing three by Xavier Joyner is good. Yeah, that was that was nice action for Mount Zion. Bynum able to keep that right foot down, avoid the travel, nice penetrating pitch. 27-15. Booster. They work it inside. The Langford Jr. can't get the angle. The ball poked out of uh, poked away. Bynum has it back the other side, leading the break. And it gives it a joiner who scores. Quick 4-0 run. Joiner's dad is a uh, he's a coach's son. His dad's an assistant at Mount St. Mary's. Doesn't want to go play for his dad, though. Really? Division one recruitment, but wants to. That's a tough thing to play for you. Well, you know, I, was, I saw the other day, too, uh, Binghamton's head coach's son is at Providence. Yeah, yeah, I think he's a, I think he's a walk. So he, okay, I yeah, so. he, uh, I saw he made his first college shot he the did. other day. It yeah, was pretty coach cool. Yeah, Dempsey tweeted about it. Yeah, yep. I saw that. Tommy Dempsey, one of the great coaches in the American East. Terrence Clark, meanwhile, heading to the free throw line for the Bobcats. It's not an easy thing to be uh, to coach your son or to play for your dad, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's a tough, that's a fine line to walk every day in the locker room for all parties involved. And the free throw is up and good. Yeah, and I I don't think it matters the level either, right? I mean, to play for dad or to coach yeah, your kid think, is not an easy so. thing. 
Mark, the Boston native, makes both. Good looking player. Certainly one of the best we've seen in New England this year, huh? Yeah, he's he's been the he's been the top ranked prospect in New England since he first debuted now two and a half years ago because he, he's only gonna have a three year high school career. Um, but he was well known even coming out of middle school. His talent was just you know, it was that kind of thing that just immediately jumped out at you. It doesn't doesn't take a, uh, a lot of analysis to know why he's so talented. Top end of the floor, we'll step aside 6.59 to go. Here in New Haven, Brewster Academy leads Mount Zion 29-17. Discover the new Cox Solution Store. Experience a whole new level of in-home comfort. It's all right here at the Cox Solution Store. Discover, learn, and experience more. Well, back in New Haven, Brewster Academy leading Mount Zion Prep out of Baltimore. And Adam, your thoughts? Uh, well, about nearly 14 minutes into this game. I think Brewster has been clicking offensively right now. They're moving the ball. They're executing their stuff. Got 30 points and 29 points rather in 13 minutes. I think it's, it's been all good. But I'll tell you what, this is a Mount Zion team that has a lot of fight. They are not going anywhere anytime soon. So. This one's just getting started. Set to inbound. Syracuse recruit, Woody Newton. He's got the basketball now. Perfect for that zone, isn't he? That, that wide yeah, he really is. Build. Play for Coach Beheim. Can't get the shot inside and gets in. Gets foul, though, as he gets trying to get to that hoop and they get a little bit too much of the body. Well, you saw the second jump from Ngisi in there, which was impressive. Just bouncing back up for a, a second and third attempt at that rebound, getting himself to the free throw line as a result. And Giesen goes to the charity stripe and will shoot two. And he makes the first good looking uh, free throw. Yeah, he's got a good natural touch and be somewhat inconsistent with it at times. But another guy who I think has more potential to discover as a, uh, as a shooter and a, and a guy who can stretch the floor. Misses the second one and rebound taken in by Damar Langford Jr. from Worcester, Massachusetts. Bynum with the basketball. And back to defend. Here's a left wing three. A little bit too strong. That one let go by Connor Barrett. Yeah, he can make that shot though. He's headed to Valpo and Big reason why is his ability to shoot that ball. Not a guy that you want to leave open, huh? No, not at all. And <laughs> I think when, you, when you've got so many high-level playmakers, I mean, you see this at the, high, right. at the highest levels of the game. When you've got guys who can make plays, you need to surround them by guys who can make shots. That's how you open up the lane and create space for, for them to show their creativity with the ball. So he's, he's really an ideal blend guy uh, in that respect. Larry Smith misses the three-point attempt. Brewster Academy will try to respond. 29-18, Bobcats lead it. They've led basically throughout this first half. Langford Jr. with the basketball. Gets it to Matt Cross. Going to show a little space and some range. And he knocks down the J from 16 feet out along the baseline. Yeah, great touch, great rotation on that ball. And Matt can shoot it, too. He's definitely a guy who you can pick and pop with, who can stretch the floor. Driving in was Kadal Waller, and it'll be a turnover as Brewster gets it back. Just last year alone, Brewster Academy won their latest national prep championship. Jalen LeCue became the uh, most recent player to hang his jersey on the uh, NBA wall. What a move by Kadri Richmond and drives in the, the Syracuse-bound prospect 
scores easily. Yeah, as I, I said it before, and I'll say it again. I, I think he's even more talented than people realize. Um, he might even be more talented than he realizes, quite frankly. I mean, his, his instincts and his hand-eye coordination, uh, just really, really off the charts. Eason drives in and gets the shot to go. Nice move. Yeah, might have slid his pivot foot there, but good no call, indeed. huh? Yeah. <laughs> It's a 13-point game as we go inside five minutes to play here in the half. There's Richmond of the Mashburn Jr. And nails the long two. Shot. It and is. You know, you create some separation with one bounce, rise up into a pull-up. That's the kind of shot that translates levels. Dal Waller with the basketball. Turns on Mashburn. Move to the middle of the floor. Now Barrett steps into a three, a little bit too strong. Skying for the rebound. Ashburn Jr. Well, Zion just hasn't been able to get things going offensively here. I, I think they're, believe it or not, I think, you know, this is almost being played at, at Brewster's pace right now. I'm not sure they can win a half-court game. Just shows you the strength. You, you watched Matt Cross Matt's a beast. get to the, yeah. he is, I mean, he just rolled his way to the rim that time, initiated the contact, and, but boy, I mean, you talk about strength, I mean, that's pure muscle to do that, and gets the foul, and we'll go to the free throw line. Yeah, and, and pound for pound, this is a kid, you know, you look at him, and you say, geez, you're, you're an NFL tight end. Right. Um, but he's, he's uh, taken that mentality, He's chiseled his frame over the years. He's expanded his skill set. He's diversified his attack. He just keeps getting better at every step along the way. And, and you don't put up EYBL numbers like he did unless you are a darn good player. Makes the first free throw. Put his team up 16. And now 17-point edge for Brewster Academy out of Wolfboro, New Hampshire. A couple of free throws from Matt Cross, who is Miami bound. So the way Mount Zion beat Brewster last year was they pressed, they they won every 50-50 ball, they tried to make this, tried to speed the game up as much as they could, and, and I don't want to say junk it up, but their energy was the difference maker. Foul called on Brewster. It'll be an inbounding situation for Mount Zion. How many of the players have turned over from last year to this year? Quite a few, quite a few. Woody Newton is back, uh, Nagisin is back. Um, the backcourt has all changed. And the coaching staff is there. But I tell you what, as much as sometimes these rosters change in, in prep school basketball, the the style and the blueprint of a particular program rarely does. Nice take there, though. Yeah, driving all the way is Kanari Smith. And the Baltimore native gets the shot to go and the foul and a chance for Mount Zion to try to shave the deficit a bit. Yeah, doesn't have a... Doesn't boast a uh, gaudy frame, but went right through the contact there with a good first step. 6-1. Generous, I would that say. <laughs> and he'll get a free throw to try to cash in in a three-point play. But too strong with a free throw. Dari Richmond has it for Brewster. It's been off to Mashburn Jr. Now Langford Jr. drives in as the shot blocked. Blocked away by Richmond. Back the other side, Zion. And Giesen, I should say, with a block. And down the other side, Mount Zion tried to cash in but could not. And those are the types of opportunities you, you can't give away if you're trying to beat a program like, like Brewster. You gotta cash in there, right? Absolutely. Somehow. Three on one, you, you cannot turn that ball over. That, that's, gotta, that's gotta be a two. There's Richmond off to Langford Jr. Cross court pass to Richmond. Mashburn Jr. thought about a three. Instead, drives along the baseline, pulls up in traffic, can't get the shot to go. Tough shot. Yeah. Cross trying to get the offensive rebound, comes into the hands of the Warriors. Yeah, he might have gotten away with one there. Here's Smith for a long two, no good. And nothing but white jerseys underneath for the rebound. It's we're out by Langford Jr. And that, again, just another suspect decision. Kind of have to head fake a guy off and then settle for a tough three with a hand in your face. I'm not sure that's how you get it done against Brewster. Audrey Richmond drives in, puts it up with the right hand. Can't get the shot to go. Partially blocked. On Zion back the other side. Here's Zengisen. Tries the three and sinks it. Uh, rather, uh, Woody Newton 
hits the three. Showing that versatility, being able to stretch the floor, trailing the break. He'll be another guy who can pick and pop. Put that body type on the wing in the Syracuse zone. He's going to be a factor on the defensive end as well. Two minutes to go here in the half. And Zion trying to get back into it in a little mini run. Langford Jr. Right wing three by Richmond off the mark. Now Zion pulls down the rebound. And Geeson had to lead the break and a whistle call and a foul. Got to give that ball up to a guard. It'll be a turnover and Brewster Academy takes over. DeAndre Harvey checking into the game. Nice little mini run by Mount Zion Prep to get yeah, back into yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. And, and as you know, Duels, I'm a big uh, proponent of the importance of the, the first couple sure. of minutes and the last couple of minutes of each half. So. Langford Jr. drives in deep, pulls up, and traffic kisses it off the window and in. Pretty shot. Tough shot. By DeMar Langford Jr. out of Worcester. He's got a freakish body type, doesn't he? He does. It's a great story. I said to him, uh, I think it was last spring I was watching his AAU team practice. I said, they, they call him Boo. I was like, hey, Boo, just have a cheeseburger for me, would you? <laughs> just, just have one. He said, no, nah, I don't eat that. Going to Austin College, Langford Jr. And he's the best local recruit that Boston College has gotten in a long, long time. I mean, he's a consensus top 100 player in the country. Not necessarily because he's an offensive focal point, but just because he contributes to winning in so many different ways. He can really defend. He's an outstanding perimeter rebounder. And he's actually the type of guy who doesn't need a ton of volume to uh, on the offensive end to change the game. And that's going to be exciting for him, being from Massachusetts, to play up at Chestnut Hill and in the ACC. And with his older brother. Right. How cool is that? Yeah, Makai Ashton Langford, who was uh, another top 100 prospect coming out of high school, spent two years at Providence, never really clicked for the Friars like, like people projected. Um, you know, had some maturing to do, got to shoot it a little bit better, but he's an undeniable talent with the ball in his hand, has a ton of shift, finishing ability, so really looking to revitalize his his story with the Eagles. I think he'll have a chance to do that. DeAndre Harvey at the free throw line where he misses his first attempt. He is from Daytona Beach, Florida. And it's also notable, his older brother, Makai, also played at Brewster Academy. So there's there's that continuity as well. Not showing the second one. Make it a 12-point game with 65 seconds to go in the half. Here's Richmond. Pulls up. 15 feet on that right side. Can't get the shot to go, but over the back foul called. Yeah, he's got to be careful with that. Got away with one earlier. Boatload of talent. You take a look at some of the college coaches. Chris Casey over there. Jay Young, the Fairfield head coach. Yep. How about that? You take over, you get a head coaching job in the MAC, and you're able to get a guy on your staff who'd been a also a head coach in the MAC the year prior. That was a terrific coup from Jay Young to get Chris Casey on his staff. Casey was at Niagara for a long time, an assistant at Central Connecticut. St. Uh, John's. St. John's, yep. that's right. And Joyner goes to the free throw line. Xavier makes the first to make it 39-28. They're chipping away. They're hanging around as we knew they would. This team is not going to go anywhere. Brewster's got to make sure they don't have a letdown here. Knocks home both to make it a 10-point game with just under a minute to play here in the half. As Richmond by the mid-floor line gives it a Mashburn Jr. He drives in, elevates and scores. Boy, he can get up. Yeah, big time play right there. That's an area of his game he's really improved. His ability to attack off the bounce was more of a catch and shoot guy a year ago, but being able to put his head down. Straight line drive right now. Makes it 41 to 29 with a field goal. And Geeson with the basketball now from Mount Zion. He's gonna drive in and get the shot to go to make it a 10 point game. Yeah, hard straight line drive of his own. Brewster will be able to hold for one here, 12 on the clock. That's it. Shot clock is off, here's Richmond. And I get rid of the defense. Drives in, hangs in the air, puts it off the window. Can't get the shot to go. Mount Zion the rebound. And that will get us to halftime. Had a chance. An exciting uh, first 20 minutes of basketball, Adam. 
Certainly was. I think you got to give Mount Zion a lot of credit. Brewster came out clicking on all cylinders offensively. Mount Zion proved to be a scrappy team that we knew they were, persevered here, and they had a nice run to close out the half. Halftime, the National Prep Showcase, and it's Brewster Academy, 41. Mount Zion Prep of Baltimore, 31. We'll be back after this. Drone Racing League pilot Wild Willie is testing his skills on the scariest course imaginable. His mom's house. Fortunately, he's using panoramic Wi-Fi from Cox. Because even a one-second delay could mean trouble for everyone. Wall-to-wall -wall fast panoramic Wi-Fi from Cox. Wi-Fi at the speed of flight. Okay, honey, let's go! Oh, wait, my mat! Oh my god, we're gonna be late! It'll just take two seconds! Have you seen my wallet? Is it in your pocket? I don't have pockets in these leggings, Lindsay. Do you need it? You know they don't let us in the class even if we are one minute late. It's here! It's in my head! Oh. Everyone, calm down! Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. okay! The coffee pot. Do we turn it off? Oh god, should we check? We, we should check! check. Uh. Oh. Good thing we checked. All the lights, I left the lights on in the office, I know I did. Oh, we don't have time. You have literally two seconds. Let's go! We forgot to lock the door! Oh, we're never gonna make it to high yoga! <laughs> You ready to get your down dog on? You know it, babe. Let's lock up. Turn off the lights. Turn off the coffee pot. Turn off the TV. Ready for some Ashley B? Oh, you know it. And we're all locked up. But, hey, look at that. We're like 15 minutes early. Enough time to catch a movie. Oh. Very funny. Let's just take the scenic way. That sounds lovely. <laughs> the right connection can open a world of curiosity for your child. With Cox, Families that have a K-12 student and receive government assistance could qualify for low-cost home internet with Wi-Fi. That means more learning and more achieving. Qualify now. It's time to connect with Cox. Come on in and discover the new Cox Solution Store. Experience a whole new level of in-home comfort. It's all right here at the Cox Solution Store. Discover, learn, and experience more. Drone Racing League pilot Wild Willie is testing his skills on the scariest course imaginable. His mom's house. Fortunately, he's using panoramic Wi-Fi from Cox because even a one-second delay could mean trouble for everyone. Wall-to-wall -wall fast panoramic Wi-Fi from Cox. Wi-Fi at the speed of flight.
We're back at halftime in New Haven, the National Prep Showcase. Chef Dooley along with Adam Finkelstein. And Adam, your thoughts on really an entertaining first half? Well, I thought you saw the full offensive firepower of this Brewster Academy roster. You get a sense of why they had so many guys sign their national letter of intent during last week's early signing period. But you also saw the resilience of this Mount Zion program under Roderick Harrison. They are always a gritty team with a lot of fight in them, and they showed that. Would have been easy to get blown out of right. this game. Brewster went up early, but they continue to fight, made it 10-point game here going into half. Yeah, one point is a 14-point game, and yeah. a couple of mini runs get it, and, and moments ago is actually down to single digits. Yeah, and, and I think, quite frankly, they, they they took some momentum out of out of Brewster's sales. They had an opportunity to really go into uh, into halftime with a, with a lot of momentum, but give Mount Zion credit. They, they hung around, and, and I think we're going to have a good second half. What do you think both teams discussed at the intermission? Well, I think for Mount Zion, it's it's got to be about winning 50-50 balls. I think they've got to find some opportunities to run, get some easy points. As I said, I don't think they're going to out-execute this Brewster team walking the ball up the floor and going possession for possession. I think for Brewster, it's, it's uh, continuing to just grow and get these guys to, to compete. I mean, for as much talent as they have, right. that's the key here. You can't take anything for granted. you got to keep fighting all the way through. All right. Well, both teams will get final instructions from their coaches. And take a look at some of the halftime uh, highlights from half number one. Well, the individual firepower of Brewster was on full display. This is Kadari Richmond. He's six foot six, and you see that type of playmaking ability, which doesn't exist uh, just in the open floor, but in the half court as well. But that's that's the type of run out that I think Mount Zion could look to do a little bit more of. Here you see Marcus Dockery. He's headed to Maryland next year. The smooth southpaw guard who can really, really shoot the ball. Jamal Mashburn Jr., as I said, I, I love his scoring ability. I think he's expanded his game, but I also love his mentality and his leadership. So Mount Zion getting final instructions from uh, Roderick Harrison, their head coach. Mr. Academy already on the floor. Mount Zion in the black unis with a silver trim. And white. And Mr. Academy in the white uniforms, the blue and red. Mount Zion will have it to start. Yeah, picking up the pressure here. And again, Mashburn, that's what he can do. He sets the tone of his toughness and his energy. Waller has it. Overdue. And Geeson. Back up top, Joe Smith. Now in Giesen, gets by Clark and then draws the contact and the foul. But see, that can't happen if you're Terrence Clark. I mean, that's a four-man at the next level. You know, you, you can't allow a four-man to, to drive the ball past you. So you got to move your feet quicker, get to your yeah, spot? Yeah, I mean, I think that time he got caught, caught leaning a little bit because he was anticipating the ball screen coming. But, yeah, you, you've got to be got to be in a stance, ready to move laterally. So that's going to put Woody Newton at the free throw line. Yeah, and I'm not sure why there's a discussion about this being a shooting foul. It was obviously on the floor. Yeah. Got it right. So you know it's the right call when the opposing coach doesn't object. <laughs> like, yeah, no kidding. What took you so long? <laughs> That's right. That's how you tell, right? Mount Zion with a basketball. Waller with it. Off to Newton. Caught up in no man's land. Yeah, good help there. Oh boy, nearly poked away. Joe Smith able to come up with it. Four to go in the shot clock. There's Waller. Pulls up in traffic. Can't get the shot to go. Whipping in for the rebound is Matt Cross. Can't get it to go, though. And Monzai able to cash in. Yeah, well, what happened is, is Cross and Mashburn got stuck switching on the ball screen. That, le that left uh, Cross on the perimeter, Mashburn inside. So Mount Zion had that advantage in the offensive glass. Now whistling a foul away from the action. It's going to be on... Lamar Langford Jr. No, it's no Joe, actually, Joe Smith just Joe tried Smith. to run right through Jamal Mashburn's screen. That would be a no-no. 
Yeah. Who's <laughs> with the basketball? Audrey Richmond has it. Gets it off to Langford Jr. Another foul in this sequence. And Joe Smith again, I believe. Yeah, he's initiating a lot of contact in there. Cross, uh, they got him for going back at him. Joe Smith, 6'9", 2020 graduate. He's from Alabama. He getting looked at? Yeah, I think he's a guy that a lot of people want to see how he does this season. There's, there's obvious potential and, and tools there. But you, you want to see the consistent production, especially if he aspires to play at a high level, which I think he does. Clark tries a three and nails it. Terrence Clark with a trifecta. Yeah, and you know what? He settled a little bit on that one, but that shows you just how special the talent is. Right. To create that kind of separation, use your size to be able to shoot over top of a contesting, uh, contesting defender. Top of the key, three, no good. Richmond grabs it on the run for Brewster Academy. Yeah, didn't, wasn't aware of what was behind him. On the other side, quick flush as Woody Newton finishes the dunk. Make it 44-35. Here's Terrence Clark. Going to try another three. It's going to rim out. Sion pulls down the rebound. And it's not that he can't make that. It's just a matter of whether or not that, that gets your, your teammates engaged. You know, is that a little too stagnant? A little push off there. Offensive foul. And Brewster gets it back on O. By 24-35 score. Played about two and a half minutes. You're in half number two. You know, I, I think when you can get that shot anytime you want, that's a weapon you use at the end of the shot clock. Reset the shot clock. It didn't reset. The the new because we play by NCAA rules in prep school basketball. So what happens is the the new shot clocks can reset to 30 for the normal normal rules, but on an offensive rebound it resets to 20. You got to make sure you're hitting the right button. Mm -hmm. it used to be a lot easier. There was only one button. Right, just one button to hit. There's steal the inbound pass. It's going to be Brewster basketball. Good hustle for both sides. Trying to get that one. Some pressure now in the backcourt. And for Junior, inbounds to Audrey Richmond, we told you in the first half, heading off to Syracuse. Owens Clark gets the cross, who tries the three. It's going to rim out. Offensive rebound, and Clark puts it up and in. Wow. About the body control right up and under. Yeah. Cross hesitated a little bit. I'm not sure why. That's a shot he can knock down with regularity. That's an 11-point edge. Woody Newton with the basketball. Newton drives in, puts it off the window and in. Yeah, that's impressive. That, that was not part of his game, you know, as recently as, as maybe six months ago, the ability to make a play off a ball screen like that, stopping uh, a little stop and go, up and under move. He's going to Syracuse. Nice play. Mashburn Jr. tries the three and connects. Yep, making... You know, I think pretty much everybody on this Brewster team can create a shot for themselves, but when you can create a shot for others and make make your teammates better, that's when you take your, your game to another level. As Walla tries a three, no good. And Matt Cross secures the rebound, and then the ball poked away as Mount Zion comes up with it. There's Newton. And stolen Cookies. away, yep, stolen by Richmond, who's going to go in and get fouled. Yeah, he was waiting for him. They were having a team meeting over there, just waiting for Coach Beheim. <laughs> Audrey Richmond will be a product of Beheim next year. Brooklyn, New York native, going to the free throw line. You said he's gotten better and better as well, right? Yeah, I think, you know, Kadari's talent has always been really apparent you know he finished up his career last year at South Shore it's always just about the consistency you know even this year he played uh, played with the rivals on the Adidas circuit I remember seeing him in Dallas it was one night he had I think it was 30 on Friday wow. night comes back the next morning he's got six so you just want to see him do it every time he steps on the floor because he's got as I said just terrific talent the positional size the instincts the hand-eye coordination terrific hands that, and that's an area of his game he's got to get more consistent as a, as a shot maker as well. Mm -hmm. 
Holler with the basketball. Gets it now. Waller, 16 to shoot. Left side, Frazier tries the three. Has said his name much here in the second half. No good. Rebound, Langford Jr. drives in and scores. How about that body control, huh? Going through the yeah. lane, just one hand on the ball. Pretty good balance. Home run pass the other side. A little bit too strong for Mount Zion. And on the turnover, Brewster Academy will take over. We'll keep it right here, Adam, during this timeout. 52-37 the score. That was a missed opportunity because he was there ahead of the ahead of the pack. So remember, this is a, a Brewster team that has a lot of guys who typically play two through four. But watch this DeMar Ashton Langford play again. Watch the big hands here. A little crossover move. One hand. Terrific body yeah. control to maintain his balance in midair, absorbing that contact. Nice looking play and a finish for an easy two. And look at the huddle for Brewster Academy surrounding their head coach, Jason Smith. Done this once or twice. He must get a lot of phone calls about his talent. Oh, it's a, yeah, it's a running <laughs> joke. It's a running joke. I think just the, because again, you know, it's NBA player. It's right. NBA teams who want to know what wow. your thoughts are on your guys. It's high major programs. It's mid major programs. It's even you know like, for all we talk about the Donovan Mitchells of the world, there's there's also guys like Joe Sherburn who who go off and have terrific careers at UMBC and sure. play in the NCAA tournament. I remember Joe Sherburn when he was here didn't didn't have a Division one offer until wow. really late in the year. He was one of the players that. Led UMBC past Virginia. Yeah, he was terrific. Brewster with the basketball in the white unis. On Zion back to defend. Here's Terrence Clark. To the hands of Langford Jr. Now Richmond. Richmond one on one with Frazier. Drives in and gonna call a foul on the floor. against Mount Zion. So Brewster with eight seconds to go in the shot clock. Langford Jr. will inbound actually a flip it to a fresh 20. Mashburn Jr. has it now. He's going to pull. There's Clark. Makes the pull up Jay. Gives it to Mashburn Jr. Cashes in from the left wing. And Mashburn Jr. and Cross were both in the same corner. Cross just backed up said, yeah, you shoot it. Good decision. Yeah. That guy can shoot the heck out of it. Nice communication and nice passing. Yeah, I think that it was a, it was a good improvisation, improvisation, quite frankly. Um, good move there. Didn't go down. Second chance by Frazier. No good. The ball poked out of bounds. It'll be a Brewster basketball. Yeah, I like that jump hook there from Caleb Bates, the Detroit native. Caleb Bates is also a top-notch student. He's a, a high academic kid. He's in with the basketball. Uh, back to defend, I should say. It's Richmond. Off to Jack Brown in the game. Now Brown's going to try a three. Can't get the shot to go. And rebound taken down by Mount Zion. Yeah, it was good movement there. Nice rebound by Nagisin, though. Good hands again. Tough catch. And Geeson gets the basket. Yeah. Drove in, puts it off the window and in to make it 55-39. Yeah, his, his hands have been very apparent here. He's made a number of tough catches. That one was behind his body. He was still able to pull it in. Mashburn Jr. Nice. Richmond inside with the cutting Mashburn Jr. Boy, the give and go. Man, that's that vision I'm talking about. Yeah. He didn't give that up at all. He saw him for a split second, then didn't telegraph the pass one bit. Up to 18 now for Brewster Academy. Geeson drives in, elevates, and scores. And they call the foul on Quadri Richmond, I believe. Well, it's NCA rules, so now they have the new rule there about the, uh, the flopping violation. Not allowed to flop. Interesting. We saw that in the Hartford game the other day. 
We did. That's the first time I've seen it. Yeah, it's. I, I think it, <laughs> listen, I think the call, I think it's, it's good, um, you know, to try and discourage flopping. It had gotten to the point where there was way too much of it. Um, I think it's a hard thing to implement, though. Were kids getting taught to flop, Adam? Or was it kind of some some of their game? Yeah, I think so. And I, I think, you know, I think the other thing that happens is when kids watch the NBA, they see a ton of it. Right, okay. You know, and so they're going to mimic what they see. Sure. But were they taught to flop when they take a charge? Sure. But outside of that, I think a lot of it is just um, emulating what they see on TV. And there, there's a ton of flopping in the NBA. But as Frazier gets fouled on the play, and the Phoenix, Arizona native will go to the charity stripe. And will shoot two. And his first one is good. Make it 57 42. He drops in both. Nicely done. Yeah, those look better than his free throws in the first half. Good head coach, Roderick Harrison. Garcia off to Clark. There's Terrence set to make his move. I want to see him drive this ball instead of settle. Langford Jr. back up top to Clark. Clark now for Dockery. Five to go in the shot clock. Four. Here's Garcia, the UMass product. Throws it up in traffic. Can't get it to go. Bynum pulls down the rebound. Trying to get that defender to bite on his shot fake so he could step through. He stayed on the ground, though. Bynum now for Newton. Tries the three. Can't get the shot to go. Rebound clear by the leaping Langford Jr. Langford Jr. off to the races for the alley-oop jam. Terrence Clark finishing on the opposite end. And that play is a microcosm of what DeMar Ashton Langford brings to the table. He does not need to score. He's guarding a four-man on one end. He rebounds the ball. He starts the break. He creates a shot for his teammate. And they're going to call an offensive foul. Brewster with a good defensive stop. And the Bobcats will get it back. Is Clark off to Langford Jr. Pretty. Wow, underneath the dock where he, I mean, I'm not sure if someone missed it a sound, but he would have just slipped to the rim for the easy bucket. Yeah, it's pretty. When they share the ball, that's when you, you see an opportunity, see just how special they can be if they can buy into competing and sharing the ball. And, and again, that that's where I, I think uh, Jason Smith is always at his best, is not just being able to assemble the talent, but then being able to get through to them and getting them to compete and ultimately buy into the team concept. Well, down to 16 now. That made field goal as Ron Zion comes back with the with a bucket. We go inside 12 minutes to play. Here's Clark. Followed by Newton. Throws it for Garcia. Off to Terrence Clark. Langford Jr. Inside three is nothing but nylon for Marcus Dockery. Yeah, tough shot. He had a hand in his face there. Back the other side. And Gieson tried to get it to go. A little bit too strong. It'll be a turnover, and Brewster takes over. Yeah, no, th those are those runouts that I think have been there for Mount Zion. They just haven't been able to capitalize. Mark off to Langford Jr. Nice. Now he uh -oh. drives in and jams it home with his right hand. And pumps out his chest to Mark Langford Jr. Wow, nice take. Now I would have pounded on my chest if I did that. <laughs> A little fake handoff, turn the corner, sledgehammer that thing. He is heading to Boston College. There's a top of the key three by Xavier Joyner, and he nails it. Coach's son, one of the best shooters on the team, the coach's staff's coaching staff tells you you saw it that time time out of the floor we will step aside 10 34 to go in this one booster academy leading mount zion 66 48 
Chuck Dooley, Adam Finkelstein from New Haven. You, you look at head coach Jason Smith, kind of shooter on his team for Brewster Academy. Now Mount Zion prep the Warriors. And so far, it's been at one point an 18 point lead for Brewster Academy. And they lead it now 66 48. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, they've, They've really been clicking here offensively. It's been pretty basketball to watch them share. It's so many playmakers. And when you've got this much per, I, I think this is the way the game is played these days, when you have multiple playmakers and multiple mm -hmm. shot makers on the floor together. And uh, this is a team that's really still just trying to figure out their spacing, but shown a lot of good signs in the second half in terms of willingness to share the ball. Jack Brown, now to Von Garcia. He drives in, puts it up, and scores. So... The Ponets headed to UMass with a nice move to get to the rim. And again, they've got, you know, they've got basically a wing and four guards on the floor right now, but they've got big guards on the floor. And when you've got guys like Damar Ashton Lankford, who can body up bigger uh, post players inside, defend bigger guys, hold his own on the glass, how do you guard that team on the opposite end? Kendall Bynum, Newport News, Virginia, native knocks home the three-pointer, make it 68-51. Lucky break there. Here's Terrence Clark. Off to Dockery in the hands of Langford Jr. And Javon Garcia again throws it for Clark, who steps into a three and nails it. Boy, what a sweet looking shot from outside. This kid can play. And you know what? He, he shot, I think it was 34% from the three point line in EYBL, but I think he's got a ton of shooting potential. Um, and he's already a tough shot maker. And as, as he continues to evolve and really hone that part of his craft, I, I think there's there's really a lot of upside left to discover, especially in that one area of his game. Frazier, the third, tries to spin towards the basket, draws the contact, and a foul called on Brewster. Jack Brown moved his feet pretty well there. Good little spin, spin move there from Frazier, though. So, Brazier will inbound. Gets it to Harvey. Daytona Beach, Florida product with it. Now off to Joyner. Joyner now for... Good move. And Giesen, who gets the shot to go in the foul. Nice job as he streaks to the hole. Yeah, got great separation with the pro hop there. Landed on two feet to make sure he didn't travel. That was very nicely done. And Giesen going to the free throw line. 6'9", product from the Netherlands. He's had a good day here today. I think he, he has. Helped himself. He's made a couple of high-level plays inside. The guy who's, you know, the, the key with uh, Nagisin is, is his frame. You know, he's still a little on the slight side. For a guy who's got Atlantic 10 offers in hand, trying right. to see if he can get to a higher level, it's, it's how much weight can he put on uh, so that he's able to absorb the level of physicality that comes with that level. We approach the eight-minute mark. Dockery with the basketball. Up to Garcia. Clark's going to try another three. That one rims out. Yeah, Rebound taken down, down by Nguyen. Now the home run pass to Frazier. Lays it in. Again, though, it was Nguyen starting the break, taking the ball off the glass, starting the break, and throwing ahead. Just to try to catch their breath. A little bit of pressure in the backcourt. Garcia, though, by the mid-floor line. A Langford Jr. Not a cross. Finds the cutting. Dockery, you can't get the angle. In the it's, it's another pretty set, though. I mean, yeah, you got to finish that play, but that, that was good action. Again, Mount Zion, though, they, they've yeah. had runouts. They right. just, for the most part, haven't been able to finish them. Mm -hmm. two, two layups on either end. That time, Frazier missed, and Brewster pulls down the rebound off the rim. Execution-wise, I think Brewster is ahead of schedule. There's Clark with the basketball. There's Clark. Off to Garcia. He drives to the hole. Can't get the shot to go. Rebound up for grabs. Taken down by Mount Zion. On the run out, Joyner will finish underneath. They're going to talk about it. And see, that's the thing when you're playing, when you're trying to identify roles and things like that, not clear who's supposed to get back in transition when you have a drive from the top of the key. Those are, those are mistakes of, uh, you know, responsibility as much as effort getting back in defense. 
Jamal Mashburn Jr. will check in. We'll keep it here during this timeout. Adam, 7.22 to go, 71.58. But, uh, boy, some impressive talent here this afternoon. Really has been. I mean, you know, this is, you know, Brewster, I think, is, uh, it's, it's not an uh, exaggeration to say they're, they're the most talented team on paper. I think everybody would concede that. Um, but what's been fun for me about today is you've seen guys stand out at a lot of yeah. different levels. We had, even in the last game, it wasn't, wasn't streamed. Kevin Constant from Tilton School. It's a guy who uh, played his high school basketball in Massachusetts. Had a great game. Tilton won big. He got a scholarship offer before he left the building. Oh, so that's great. That's the kind of fun really stuff. Really cool. And, and, you know, everybody wants to watch the kids who are going to Kentucky and the ACC and things like that. But it's the kids who are earning a, a free education that that potentially are having their lives changed. You know, some when you're as good as some of these Brewster guys are, a scholarship's been a foregone conclusion for a long time, but that's not necessarily the case for everybody in action today. Brewster with a very deep bench as well. I mean, just rotate guys in and out. Almost like all-stars for all-stars. Very impressive. 71-58. Brewster is controlled. Majority of this game here today. I would watch out, though, for Mount Zion. I mean, they're chipping in here. They, I guarantee you they are not going to go down without a fight. They've definitely got another run in them. And they've got some players, including the guy you see in the picture right now, David N. Gisian. They're going to apply some pressure here. Terrence Clark's going to come up. And this, again, th this is what I was alluding to earlier I probably didn't articulate it well but when there's when you've got multiple ball handlers and there's no clear-cut point guard it's it's also that much less clear whose responsibility it is to get back in transition Richmond drives in Quadri finishes off the glass in the Syracuse product makes it 73 58 that's where it's good to be a 6-6 guard yeah Kendall Bynum with the basketball, gets it now to cutting. And Giesen, who drives it and scores. Yeah, he's had a good day. It was a tough move. Went right through uh, Ashton Langford there, and that's not easy to do. There could be some scholarships waiting for the Netherlands product after today. <laughs> I think that's what he wants. I think he wants to play at that level. How about that? Oh, wow. And it's going to result in a turnover, and Mount Zion gets it back. Chance to cut the lead to 10. 6.31 to go. This is good for Brewster, though. A little gut check time. Sure. And they had at one point, and it seemed like moments ago, an 18-point lead. There's a three-pointer that's going to rim out by Angeson, and foul called on the play as the ball goes out of bounds. It will be... Mount Zion basketball. Yep. Otis Frazier will trigger it in. That's over his head, yep. Has to track that down to the backcourt. Andre Harvey has it. Harvey for Engeson. Has to drive his way in. Cut up there in a good defensive play by... That cross. Now left wing three, a little bit too strong. Offensive rebound by Frazier. And, and those are the kind of plays that I think Mount Zion should have been trying to make from the very beginning, those gritty extra effort plays. That's what it takes to beat a team that's got just a little bit more sheer talent than you do. Richmond uh, tries to get the steal away from Frazier. And They're in the bonus, I think. Yep. I think that's seven. So Frazier, uh, Richmond rather, going the free throw line. Brooklyn, New York native. A lot of time left to play, though. Now, where do you see him playing at Syracuse? I think he's, he's multi-positional. You know, okay. I mean, it, it's, I think it's really hard. I think he's got point guard instincts. I think his vision um, is, is that level. I'd like to see him play with a little bit more pace, but I think when you're a guy who's who's at the next level may be considered a non-shooter it's that much harder to play off the ball you know okay. believe it or not if you're not a great shooter it's actually easier if the ball's in your hand uh because you can still do different things to make the defense respect you there's bynum 
Off to N. Giesen. Try to get it to Newton. Well poked away. Newton comes up with it though. Now Bynum drives in, hangs in the air, count the basket, and the foul. Wow. Yeah, that was a tough play there. A lot of giddy up from Bynum off that off that burst to his left side. 2020 graduate out of Newport News, Virginia. Try to cash in on the old-fashioned three-point play. Well, and again, that's it's going to be the key for Mount Zion this year is, is their guard play because the front court uh, with Newton, McGeeson, and, and even Joe Smith being able to provide that size. Those guys are, are you know what you're going to get from them. Frazier is a big wing. It's going to come down to their guard play, and, and right now their guards are responding in this one. Well, you said it. Mount Zion is going to come back in this game, and it's now down to 10. At one point, it was an 18-point lead. Yeah, I've never seen them quit. I didn't think tonight would be the first night. Playing for Junior. Gets it to Matt Cross. Off to Richmond. Trying to get it to Cross. Cross the ball deflected, but comes up with it. Tries to work it inside of Clark, and now foul. And that's going to send Matt Cross, who is Miami bounds, to the free throw line. And kind of an official's timeout here. I think they said Matt Cross has blood on his jersey. Yeah, I think that's what they're talking about. Matt wants to shoot free throws here. They're going to make him go to the sideline. Saying he's got blood. Oh, yeah, it's right under his number there on the back. Yeah, you can see it a little bit. They're going to make him change his jersey. I don't know what they're going to do. Just try to wipe it off. Yeah, that worked. Got it. Did they make him use a timeout? No timeout. Game on. He got the LeBron treatment. No timeout necessary. <laughs> That's right. That happened in the uh, Laker game the other day. Did it really? Yeah. Bandage the arm. Play Same. on. You saying LeBron has his own rules, Adam? No. <laughs> Not there at all. There was a book about Jordan, the Jordan rules. You remember that? <laughs> I do. Free throw made by Matt Cross. How Jordan, about... LeBron, and Matt Cross. <laughs> <laughs> but how about Matt Cross goes over, leaves the area, and makes the free throw still after they just had a white blood from his jersey. How about that? He makes both. And toilet bowl the second one, even. 77-65. <laughs> Nicely done for the Beverly Mass kid. On Zion with the basketball. Here's Woody Newton. See, that's the advantage, though. They can just switch things when they have. And th those are the dynamics they're going to work on. They've, they've got to, I think, improve their defensive communication. Woody Newton nails the triple from that right sideline and make it 77-68. We approach four minutes. I think that's his third three tonight. His, his uh, offensive game has really progressed nicely. Audrey Richmond off to Clark. Got a Matt Cross. Langford Jr. 10 on the clock. Can't guard Matt down there. Oh, kick it, throw it back. There's Mashburn. Now to Clark, leans in, can't get, couldn't get the angle, and Mount Zion clears the rebound. Nine point game. Uh -huh. Frazier tries the three, can't get the shot to go, and that cross pulls down the rebound for Brewster. And that's just not the shot you want no. in that situation. You've got the momentum, chance to, I mean, you score there. The, the the game changes. What a break. That's going in, too. Three-pointer from that right wing by Jamal Mashburn, Jr. You want lotto numbers later, just let me know. 80-68. <laughs> but you got to find him, right? I mean, he was that, wide open. Yeah, yeah, and that's, I mean, that is a tough swing. Harvey driving in from Mount Zion. Can't get the shot to go. Brewster pulls down the rebound. 12-point lead. Here's Terrence Clark. Gets it off to Cross. Now Mashburn Jr. from long range hits it. Long two. 
And I think he was surprised at how open he was coming off that handoff. But what looked like it was going to be a close game in a minute ago, suddenly a couple possessions, it's back to 14. Frazier driving in and foul called. Yeah, he wasn't ready to guard there. He's going to be on that cross, and that will send Otis Frazier the thirds of the line. He throws up, no good, and the rebound taken down by Langford Jr. Twelve-point game. Not uh, still need a couple good possessions here from Brewster. Going to be very content to take time off the clock, though. Ashburn Jr. with the basketball, off to Clark on that cross. Time to go. Seven on the clock. There's Richmond. Nice. Goes it right side from Ashburn Jr. Tries the three short. Zion has it on the run out on the offensive on the defensive oh, rebound. Pretty. Now Frazier leaves it for the trailing. David and Giesen, who yeah, flushes. That's terrific transition basketball. Quick breakout, a lot of touches, ball never stuck. That was risky. I know a 10 point game, just under two minutes to play. Langford Jr. has it as Brewster's going to try to work some clock. And Mount Zion has allowed Brewster to take almost the entire shot clock. Langford Jr. drives in and gets fouled. And no, they took 27 seconds off the shot clock here. Watch out. Like I said, Matt Cross, not the guy I would want to go nose to nose with. Tough kid. Yeah. Keep it here with 142 to go, 82-72. And uh, I think Jason Smith just going to talk it over, make sure cooler heads prevail. He right. knows that at this point, that's uh, that would play into Mount Zion's hands with the time and score being what it is. What are both teams talking about right here besides catching a breath? Well, again, I think it's you know keeping your head, Brewster, making good decisions, um, maximizing the clock they've done a really good job they with that have. here uh taking advantage of the full shot clock but you also got to make sure you get back in transition don't allow anything easy conversely mount zion's got to figure out how to how to create some more possessions in this game they've got 102 seconds left in the game and if they keep allowing brewster to go deep clock every time this thing's going to be over mount zion a nice job to get back they were down by as many as 18 points but brewster uh, they, they i they give a lot of credit they got it down to 10 and then single digits but they just, uh, they didn't panic, and they showed that composure with, I think, just some of the great talent that they have on the floor. It's been a very steady effort yeah. for Brewster tonight, and I think uh, they haven't gotten too high, they haven't gotten too low. I think offensively, um, they're, they're ahead of schedule, as we said. They move the ball nicely. Uh, defensively, I think their versatility and their potential to be a great switching team is something that's going to, I mean, they're about two weeks into their season. And so that's something that takes a long time to figure out exactly how to navigate. But once they, they figure that out, I think they got a lot of uh, potential on that end as well. So the Bobcats will have DeMar Langford Jr. going to the free throw line. Chance to add to a 10-point lead with just under two minutes to play. Langford Jr. heading to Boston College. Misses the front end. And I thought it was a two-shot foul. Now whistle. Well, good job by David Ngisson, who just grabbed the rebound and, and broke to the left. No one else went after the rim, went after the yeah, ball. Yeah, it was a two-shot foul. So they'll reset. Love those psych plays. Psych. <laughs> There was some panic that time, though, for Brewster. There certainly was, yeah. Manfred Jr. trying to drop in the second one. Can't get the shot to go. A couple of misses, and, and Giesen pulls down the rebound. Exactly On the other what, side, yeah, exactly Dr. Harvey Roderick scores. Harrison wanted. He, you could hear him yelling, quick, 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 and he got it that time. 
So down to an eight point game, timeout call with 133 to go. And well, you know what, this uh, Mount Zion team, and you talked about it the earlier game, that the longer you let them uh, stay in the game, the longer they have a chance to, to, to win it. But So now this is a, a possession where you've got to expect more full court pressure here for Mount Zion. So Brewster's got to make sure they're prepared to take this ball in, prepared to get it over half court, and then prepared to make themselves available because what you don't know is if, if and when Mount Zion is going to foul. Are they going to deny you inbounds? Are they going to throw one trap? Are they going to try and get... Uh, keep it in the backcourt and then foul after it gets over. They're going to let you play out the whole shot clock. So you've got to be prepared to make yourself available as receivers when you don't have the basketball. Down on an eight-point game with 93 seconds remaining. That's been kind of a, a fun basketball game for us to it watch up been, close. Yeah. Well, the, the talent on the floor is, you know, obviously the individual talent in this game is, is particularly impressive. But what's been fun is you've had guys like David Nagisen, right, who played played uh, played very well, certainly helped themselves. Woody Newton's progression has, has been very evident here tonight. He's, he's taken his game to uh, to new levels since last year. You get a look at Jason Smith there. So as we expected, here's the full, full court, court pressure for Mount Zion. Brewster's got to be able to cross his open. So, yeah, I'm surprised. Little... Ashburn Jr.'s got it. Back to Clark. That's See, that's where, so that's where it was. They were baiting him in to that one. Richmond handled it. And Clark. 16 to go in the shot clock. And now they're going to let him play it out. Now Richmond drives in. Try to get the traffic and the ball up for grabs when it comes in the hands of Langford Jr. Six of the clock Big and he shot. nails the three. How about that? Big shot. Loose ball ended up in just the wrong place for Mount Zion and Clark knocked down another one. He's been terrific. And Geeson with the basketball. Now to Woody Newton who tries the three and connects. So Syracuse bound at 6-8 forward. Makes it 85-77 with 50 ticks left on the clock. As I said, he has taken his game to new levels. He's shooting the ball well, showed more playmaking off the dribble, and the upside from his frame has always been apparent. So down to eight again with 50 seconds to go. And you expect the steal, the, the go for the steal, and then the foul? And what do you think here? Are they going to play a little yeah, defense? I, I think, again, they, they, I'm just surprised that they've been content to allow them to get in the late clock situations at every point. I think they'd want to stretch out this last 50 seconds on the clock. Down by eight. Just there is... Led throughout here today, looking to get to the victory. Stay perfect on their young season. It's impressive. This group looks like they've been playing together for a long time. As you yeah, mentioned, it's only been a couple of weeks. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Same thing again now. Clark flings it for cross. And this is where they want to trap you, at least what they wanted to do on the last possession. Timeout call. That the old coach bailout timeout, coach? There'll be a full timeout here with 44 seconds to go and 5577 to score, 44 ticks left on the clock and we're looking now at Brewster Academy. Under tip two, coach can call. I didn't know that. Thank you. So the coach, yeah, coach, call the timeout. Yeah, the uh, I just learned something new. The uh, Coach can call the timeout only in the last two minutes. New rule this year. How about that? Yeah. We don't even have to call Secaucus to get that, uh, <laughs> that official interpretation. I'll tell you what, that's... Uh, the NBA's got nothing on us. <laughs> that's the, uh, the old bailout, though, right? I mean, he was, that was it's going also nowhere. Good coaching. You know, it's one of those things. Right. It's like, you know, everyone asks, what do you think of this rule? What do you think of that rule? And different coaches will complain, say, oh, I like it, I don't like it. You get some, like Bill Belichick will be like, I can't control the rules. I just have to learn how to maximize uh, right. my advantage mm -hmm. because of them. So Terrence Clark will inbound. Right in front of us mm -hmm. here. Six, seven, probably from Boston, Massachusetts, heading to Kentucky. Part of the number one rated recruiting class in the country right now. I don't doubt that at all. He's a good looking player. Gets it into Matt Cross. And Cross gets fouled. And 
Cross will be going to the free throw line where he was about to shoot a free throw. They found some blood on his jersey, pulled him to the sideline, cleaned him up, and then he went back and made both. Worked out well for it him. It did. And try to ice him. He makes the first one. Another free throw here and put his team up by 10 with 42 seconds to go. He does it. 87 77. Brewster Academy. There's Woody Newton. He's going to drive in, uh, put it up with the right hand. Can't get the shot to go. Frazier, the third, though, there for the offensive rebound. And put in is good. And quick uh, foul on the inbound as DeMar Langford, Jr., will be heading to the free throw line. And Frazier was able to hang in the air just long enough to allow that ball to come off the rim so he could legally tip it up and in. Be a quick rebound for the Bobcats. We're back in action first thing tomorrow morning against Fork Union Military Academy. And early morning is in the gym or nothing new for the Military <laughs> Academy. Nope. So that's not an easy matchup. Langford Jr. Sleep quick, right? It'll be a quick night. First one is good to make it 88-79. Chance to get it back to 10 again with 35 seconds to go. Big hits there. Give them credit. They've knocked down their free throws late in the game. They here. have. And the Bynum. Going to drive all the way in. The ball stripped from behind. Nicely done. Terrific defensive play that time by Jamal Mashburn Jr. Ahead to Clark with a windmill dunk. Well, he had that kind of game today, didn't he? He was impressive. He was. I, I think that uh, it was a step in the right direction for Terrence. Was efficient offensively. Showed the jumper. Played within the flow, which I think is really important for him as well. Frazier getting the shot inside and then a quick foul on the inbound as that cross is fouled. Ninety-one eighty-one with eleven point seven seconds to go. Still no quit, Mount Zion. Ten nope. point game, eleven seconds left. They're still fouling. And the five on the floor, just getting instructions from head coach Jason Smith. Cross makes the first free throw. Boy, you said it. This team has made free throws down the stretch yeah. to kind of ice this thing now. Absolutely. And two that time from Matt Cross. 11 seconds to go. Newton. He's going to pull up for a three-pointer. Kisses it off the window and in. And now a timeout call by Zion Prep. Well, that's a good-looking shot. Got help from the window, but it goes right through. That orange circle to make it 93-84, 6.3 to go. I don't know that he called that one, but I tell you what, he deserves it after the game he had here today. Mm -hmm. So Take a look again. That one's deep from the shoulder. Middle of the box and right through. The bank is open late on Fridays That's in right. New Haven. Mm -hmm. I know a nine-point game. A lot of offense today. Yeah, I'm not really sure what they're talking about, quite frankly, with six seconds left. I mean, this one is uh, virtually academic. Is that what you Yeah, I mean, I think, yep, it's, it's about over. I'm not sure right? you can do it. You did, yeah. yeah all right. Yeah, I think you just want to stop the clock. I guess figuring in, maybe you never know. But no, you're right. I mean, they, they played to that final whistle, though. And the old Greg, uh, the Greg Popovich line, you know, every every second on the court is an option. Don't waste any second on the court. Chance to get better. Mm -hmm. and what has been abundantly clear is Mount Zion will fight until the very, very yep. end. Langford Jr. will inbound for Brewster. Inbounds, but it's thrown right in the hands of Bynum, who cashes in. So a quick basket. Now to inbound to Clark, who gets fouled with 2.7 to go. So this last 60 seconds, he's gone like 15 minutes. They try to drag this game out. Is I'm not sure it's going to do and much half, good. Yeah, 93-86. The... Right. He throws coming for Terrence Clark. Chance for him to add to his totals today, which are very impressive. 
Six seven. 2020 graduate. Out of Boston. I'm a fun following him at Kentucky though. He's a good looking player. He's a uh, he's a five star prospect. He's been a five star prospect his entire career. The uh, and you know what the fun thing for Terrence there's only a handful guy of guys in the country who can say this every year but he is in com complete control of his destiny as a basketball player because he has all the natural ability there's not much he can't do and uh, still has so much uh, left to discover in, in his game and in his efficiency don't shoot it and just gets the rebound and that'll do it a nice job by Brewster Academy as they win it 94 86 it was a good effort, as I said, it polished offensively, a lot of different weapons. They were clicking together, sharing the ball for the uh, better part of the game. Mount Zion, as gritty and as tough as we expected, refused to go away until literally the very last possession. Well, up next, we'll have Northfield Mount Hermon School of Massachusetts against Linkia Prep out of Missouri. But for now, for Adam Finkelstein, Jeff Dooley saying once again, the final score, Brewster Academy, 94, Mount Zion, 86. Thanks for watching.